name is Nara, Nara Bahadur Karki. I'm from Nepal. I was born in remote village of uh, Western Nepal that calls Karnali province. My education and my basic primary and high school I did, I, I accomplished uh, from Karnali province and then moved to Kathmandu for my professional and further study. And then I started development work and joined um, some international agencies for social work. And I, I served with DFID, uh, I served with WHO, UNICEF, and many other organizations I worked for as a consultant. Uh, uh, since uh, 2009, I'm working as a <clears throat> life coach. I help people to, to internalize, to realize, to materialize, and to, uh, to, to, uh, to handle their dreams. Uh, to, uh, you know, whatever, whatever dream they have, people have, whatever uh, wishes people have, whatever dilemmas and uh, people go through their complete and incomplete uh, life's most important, you know, business. I help them to uh, come to clarity. Young people, world people, professionals, and the social pe social workers. So that is my major work as a life coach. And my coaching methods are based on metaphysical methods. So I help people to see outside the world and same time inside their, you know, their world. The inside world means what stops them, what confusion they have, what uh, kind of dilemmas they have, and what courage, what vision, and what kind of will they have. So I help uh, those dreams and those will and those confusions uh, to sharpen to meet the, um, to meet their lives, you know, most important uh, milestones. That's, uh, that's me and married. Uh, happily, I have two uh, children, uh, one daughter and son, um, wife, and I have my siblings staying around the world. Uh, and um, I, uh, I, do, I do a lot of campaigns. Uh, right now, I'm involved in a campaign that calls a hunger response campaign. So as you know, Nepal is, uh, Nepal, uh, economically, Nepal is a challenging nation. It doesn't have very inspiring and very motivating indicators, like uh, gender indicators, women's status, say, let's say, and caste system, and income, unemployment uh, related issues, and uh, inequality and also people's participation, fair participation in politics, and many issues uh, we are dealing with. So right now, these all difficulties, to be honest, all difficulties leads to impact or to suffer either children, women, or the poor people. So I, my campaign is to feed those uh, people, those who are in a hunger crisis or say doesn't have food safety enough. So uh, yeah, this is who I am. And previously I was doing a lot of social other campaigns like full immunization program uh, in Nepal. So immunization is one of the important uh, public health program. Uh, and uh, um, many of the children, 13% to 14% children uh, in whole world, uh, uh, in fact, uh, one out of 10 children, child in the world, they are missing vaccine. So in Nepal, I, initiate, I have initiated a campaign that calls full immunization program. So where we vaccinate, provide immunization, all selected antigens to all children. So that was my and my team's campaign since 2012 and later now, 
And now we are also uh, working on the child marriage issue. So working against the child marriage is my another uh, issue uh, in my campaign. Uh, this uh, coaching field. So I was first officially trained coach in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And my, yeah, I did my education from uh, Academy for Coaching Excellence. My coach uh, is Maria Nemet, Dr. Maria Nemet. So after that, after, you know, I, I went through a curriculum, coaching uh, curriculum, and that gave me a lot of confidence that, you know, yeah, there, there is a, there's a way to help people. There's a, uh, there are people's internal situation, external situation, and there are things people, stopping people to achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, part of education, part of experience, part of my, uh, my surrounding, you know, that everything uh, helped me or always been uh, inspiring things uh, for me to come in this field. Calling for me is uh, whatever, whatever, whatever problem you are dealing with, whatever situation uh, which is unpleasant for you, you are going through, or uh, whatever kind of saturation you are experiencing, or maybe you, you, are, you are feeling lack of meaning in your life, or you see there are no possibilities around. In that situation, there is a voice of wisdom. There is a deep exercise you can follow to yourself as a guru. You become your master and you start asking yourself, what is the calling for me in this situation? Like in this situation of pandemic, the whole world is irritated depressed, maybe disturbed. And it is, it is just, you know, I mean, anxious. But there are few people who are working to create a calling. What is the calling? And that calling, that calling is a possibility. That calling is not only answer. That calling is not a solution. That calling is a possibility of new, brand new life. I always call my graduates and my people, my coaches. Life is not, life is not about reaching to the peak of the mountain. Rather it is about walking the mountain which doesn't have any peak. <laughs> Life is not about reaching. Life is not about achieving. Life is not about, you know, having something or getting something or gaining something. Rather, life is about walking toward the mountain and climbing the mountain, which doesn't have any peak. You will never know in your life, whole life, whether you were reaching or not reaching. You arrived or not, you are not designed to know that. And I mean, for me as well, I keep on walking and where I am. For somebody, I already walked a lot. For some people, I'm far behind. For some, for some people, I, I lived them. For some people, I arrived for them. There is no point of you know departure. There is no point of you know arrival. Mm -hmm. There is only a journey. Physical existence of success. There is only metaphysical, internal, spiritual attraction. There is there is no opponent in success. There is you and another you. The one you who believes and one who doubts. Mm -hmm. So there's two person playing inside you. The one 
the one is confident, one you is confident, and another you is not confident. So whoever wins will be right, all right. After all, you are the one to win. As a, as a believer and as a doubt maker. That I don't, I don't bother them uh, why they are happy and why they are not happy. And then, they, then by themselves they become happy. Because our bothering, our too much concern, our too much responsibility about other people's happiness creates kind of depend, dependency. You know, like you, you, you know, my, my children, my family, my, you know, friends and whoever around. If I every day, if I start checking every hour, whether you are happy or not, they will actually feel irritated. You know, my, my over concern, my over responsibility about other people will make them overburdened. So I, I let them be free. I, I never disturb them. I never control them. I never blame them. And I normally don't, uh, don't take other people's responsibility for happiness because every individual have their own responsibility to live, thy, to live their life happily. I am not responsible for other people's happiness. And same time, I'm not responsible. I have no right to disturb, to destroy, to create pain for others. I don't want to control other people. I don't want to blame other people if I'm not happy because my happiness is my responsibility. If I don't take my responsibility for my happiness, then probably I cannot create any beautiful thing in this world. Person looks like, and then people forget to be successful uh, people start loving that definition of success and they end up, uh, you know, reaching somewhere else. So happiness is a habit, is an internal habit. Does it, it accept, it accept everything. There is, n there is no word, no in happiness. Happiness doesn't have a vocabulary of no. It accepts whatever it is. The pain, the sorrow, the attachment, affection, even uh, physical pains, whatever it is, it says yes. Yes. The, the amount of energy goes to say no is huge. I'm not saying that everyone should say yes for everything. I'm definitely not going to say yes for violence, yes for abuse, yes for domination. Yes for control. No, I'm not going to say that. But I'm saying why it is habit for myself. For me, it is the ability to say yes. And once we say yes, then that becomes a territory to play. Then it is under my control whether to, you know, how to behave, how to handle the happiness. The ultimate source for a human being is the happiness, nothing else. Mm -hmm. and, and every incident and everything that brings a necessary gift for us 
is happiness. Because we learn to say yes to the world. And that should be the departure point for happiness, I guess. This obstacle in my life was that I started believing myself a poor uh, citizen, honestly. I was born in a farmer's village. My, mo my, mo my mother and father both were illiterate farmer. So in my childhood, <clears throat> I repeatedly, I heard a word that we were a poor family. That was a regular, uh, regular kind of, you know, uh, expression from my mother and my father also. And I heard and I was trying to define that word. What, it, what is it to be poor? What is poverty? But I never had a chance to ask my teacher in school. I never had a chance to ask to my friends because it was associated with shame, guilty. It was associated with inability of your family. I never asked. And I never found any definition. But I carried that internal discourse internal discussion, the inside discussion for 35 years. I carry that discourse within me. And I wanted to throw that away. My external situation were, were far better. I had a good job. I was working with multinational organizations had, you know, was traveling in some time in a uh, good armored Toyota car and sometime traveling in airplane and having a luxurious office, everything. But my internal story was repeatedly, you know, engaging me and investing that energy. Why? Why am I a poor person? So that, that story was, in a way, biggest challenge for me. And it took me 35 years to throw away. And it takes, that's why it takes a coaching. That's why I do coaching for the other people. Because, you know, once there is a cyst inside your body, once there is some kind of, <clears throat> kind of uh, the infection which is not curable by antibiotic in your body, you go through operations, you go through surgery, and that surgery is life-saving surgery. And the coaching also does the same thing. There are people who are severely, who are damaging themselves by engaging in their own stories. So I had that stories of poverty and being a poor, you know, person, and I threw it away. And the moment I just came to clarity, there is nothing like physical poverty. There is nothing like physical existence of poverty. It was a mental poverty. It was a spiritual poverty. It was a, it was definition of me. So once I came to clarity about that story, my life immediately transforms, transformed. There are so many people, there are millions and millions of people, they believe they are women. That's their stories. We are human, but millions of people started believing that they are women. There are caste system. And millions and millions of people started believing they are lower caste people. Millions and millions of people, they started believing that they are not lucky. They are not fortunate. And this, you know, imagine these stories, if these stories are transformed, this universe would be an amazing place.
that's what I do here in Nepal. I, I, I tell, I share my story to the people. And I ask so many, you know, many adolescent and young girl, women, and so-called, you know, lower caste people, and <clears throat> so-called poor people, and ask, I, I listen their stories. And I went to Afghanistan to listen those stories. For two years, I was there. And I, <clears throat> uh, yeah, in, I think in two months, uh, I was listening nearly 600 stories of Afghan citizens. They were very powerful. So my obstacle is my internal definition about me. That was, I'm a poor, I cannot do many things. But how how did you um, you know change you know your own perception? You said it comes to more clarity, right? So how did that clarity came? How did you realize that? Yeah, that clarity is about you know <clears throat> uh, in psychology there is a there is a term uh, you know we use when there is a trauma a primary trauma to the people. Uh, to heal those trauma, we ask people to re-experience their experience. Because they have certain type of illusionary, traumatic, or exaggerated form of experience. So once we ask people to re-experience the event, they actually encounter with that reality. <clears throat> that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that you know, harassing. You know, that wasn't that dominating. That wasn't that threatening. That wasn't that much you know, life-threatening. So in that moment, in the re-experiencing moment, you realize that it was nothing, it was just, uh, you know, a small thing happened to me. And I started, uh, you know, creating and expanding and extending this uh, experience. Uh, so that, that, that is how I went. My coach led me, uh, my coach helped me to go through my whole life's story. There were, quite honestly, there were unbelievably uncountable stories in me. Every human being, every human life is a compilation of thousands of stories. Stories that you remember, stories that you don't remember. Stories that, that hurt you, that gives you pain, you notice it. And stories that you don't notice, but they are giving pain to you. Stories, those who, are, who inspire you, who actually you know, serve you, uh, and your courage, but uh, so those are thousands of stories compiled in one human being. So particular stories are the are they work as a they they work as a pillar. And they work, they work, they shape the whole idea of life. So once you know those stories you re-experience those stories, you retell those stories, and then the clarity, and then the cloud, and that confusion is melted away, is disappeared automatically. There is nothing to throw it away. It is just about lighting a dark room with a candle. And the moment you, you, light, you light the candle, Mm, the darkness is no more over there. It seemed for all of us that life is about to begin and life is about to be better and world is about to be better than before. But there are always challenges, always uncertainties, always there comes obstacle and we 
we as a humanity, our whole civilization have created a track record that we have beaten, we have overcome all challenges and all obstacles. It is not the last, it is not the first, it is the process the humanity have always been able to respond and we will overcome the situations and human being, our amazing creator, amazing creator, they will create any possible solution that even not exists right now, we will find the way and we will be better place and better humanity and our health, our societies, our communities. And the whole universe, whatever confusion it is going through, it has to accept a fact that the next person is always better person. Though we pay a lot of cost, though we are, you know, paying and you know, this hardship is not a fake hardship. This hardship and these challenges are not a, um, you know, uh, not a uh, just like illusionary challenges. These are real, but more real will be the solution. Our economic system will transform, I guess. Our political system will be transforming. Our social systems are, you know, being uh, transformed. Our relationship are also being, um, you know, uh, deeply thought. You know, we are on in the under the process. So everything will be a better person. I'm confident about that. Right. Mm -hmm.